Part 1. White Clouds. Ethereal Moon. The Cause of Sorrow. Though most stars will still glimmer in the crisp winter air, the Blue Sea Star has gone back into hiding. Legend states that the goddess prays for peace from her home in the heavens. In the town of Garig Mach, the anniversary of the monastery's completion nears, and the people's prayers intensify ahead of the Millennium Festival, still five years hence. I'm here, Professor. That delightful smell. My favorite tea. Is it yours, too? Sorry to trouble you. Hmm, tasty. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the tea, Professor. Let's do that again sometime soon. Keeping it clean, sweeping it clean. No more trash, no where, no how. Oh darn, there's trash over there. Professor, the cathedral's a real important place for the Church of Saros, so I always make sure it's all sparkling clean. The monks do some cleaning too, and they tell me not to bother, and sometimes they even say to go away, but they just don't clean as good as I do. I don't stop until everything shines. Nah, not really. And Lady Rhea told me it's okay if I don't show an interest unless I feel like it. And I haven't so far, but... I just want to take good care of the things she cares about. If there's a thing she wants taken care of, then I'll do it better than anyone else. What do you think? You'd go the extra mile for Lady Rhea, wouldn't you? Maybe you don't realize how great a person Lady Rhea is. She's always praying hard as she can for her followers all across Fodlin. She does it every single day. And even though she's always so busy, she tries to listen to as many people's needs as she can. When she seen the kids who lost their parents in Remire Village, she didn't leave them there. She got the church to take those kids in, same as me. She's so kind. She's almost like a mom to all her followers, and just everybody that I can think of loves her. Hang on, Are you trying to say you know more about Lady Rhea than I do? Okay. Maybe she likes you more than she likes me. But I know that I know a whole lot more about her than you do. I know these things, okay? So don't go talking down to me like you know better. Huh? Well, just as long as we're all clear on that. We are planning a grand ball for this month. I'm sure the students will be most pleased. Yes, certainly. However, we must not devote all of our time to frivolity. We have a new mission for you. 
We have found evidence of someone sneaking into an unused chapel. No, there is nothing of value in that building. We do not yet know what the intruder's objectives are. This month, your class is tasked with guarding the chapel and investigating these intruders. With the recent state of affairs surrounding the Holy Church, we cannot afford to overlook any abnormality, no matter how seemingly trivial. I am ordering a seasoned knight to assist you to ensure the safety of the students. In times like these, I am afraid we must always expect the worst. Reporting for duty, Lady Rhea. I thought you two could use the time to bond. And to speak of important matters. <laughs> Appreciate the thought. Bear in mind that Gerald has a separate mission of his own. He will join you once he has finished it. It's true. I'll be away from the monastery for a while. But when I return, I'll come and watch you work. I'll be looking forward to it. Ready for your command. Ready for orders. Perfect comprehension.
All that hard work's paid off. I can't believe I did it! new path to tread. Claude, are you aware of the most recent conflict within the Alliance? Hello to you too, Lawrence. And you'll have to be more specific. The Alliance is always bickering over one thing or another. Margrave Edmund is raising objections over the assignment of his troops to the Eastern defenses. If you please, one noble, another will only gripe. No matter what happens, there will always be conflict. That is just the kind of lackadaisical attitude that causes more conflict among us than necessary. Now, listen to me carefully. House Edmund may not hold much land, but the land they do control is quite rich. They also maintain a thriving port. Their influence is poised to rival even the most powerful players in the Alliance. Yet they claim they cannot spare a fair share of troops? Do you find it acceptable to let such an obviously unreasonable objection stand? It's not as though the threat of Almira to the East has proven all that threatening of late. Such negligence! What makes you so certain the Almirans will not attack us tomorrow? If certain dukes hold back their proper share of support, it will only serve to weaken House Goneril's hold of our eastern flank. Calm yourself. I am well aware that the financial situation of House Edmund is quite exceptional. However, what you fail to realize is that they are lacking in troops. They're not lying when they say they don't have that many to spare. As it were, the Almirans have been nothing but peaceful since we refortified Fodlan's Locket. And are you aware that Margrave Edmund paid the majority of the costs for those repairs? Is that so? In fact, it's largely thanks to the skilled craftsmen he assembled that the fortress is now so impregnable. I, for one, wouldn't want to attack a fortress as formidable as that. I do see your point. If House Edmund has already made its fair contribution, then that is all we can ask. Very well. I withdraw my objection. But even the sturdiest fortress needs soldiers to defend it. If we continue to squabble amongst ourselves, it will eventually fall. Well, well. And here I thought he only cared about status. Still, if someone like him really came to lead the Alliance, it would not bode well for Almira. <laughs> What are you writing there, Hilda? Ah, uh, wait, let me guess. You're replying to one of your brother's letters, right? Of course. It's a pain, but I make sure to always send him a response, otherwise he'll worry. It's much easier than when we lived together. A few letters here and there are a small price to pay for this peaceful, brother-free environment. <laughs> well, that's a fine thing to do, regardless of your reasons. As for me, it's been far too long since I've written to my parents. Oh, I thought your father had died. Not quite. He's still alive and kicking, as far as I know. The late Duke who died in an accident was my uncle. I see. I do recall you mentioning that your mother was born into the Regan family. What's your father like, if you don't mind me asking? He's quite the extravagant character. When I was a kid, he used to tie me to a horse and drag me around. Excuse me? In all fairness, I was quite a little brat. The horse thing sounds worse than it is. There's sort of a trick to it. 
A trick I hope I never need to learn. Your mother didn't step in and make him stop? Gods, no. She'd just laugh right along with him. If my father is extravagant, my mother's more like a warrior goddess, or maybe a demon queen. This one time, she got into an argument with my combat instructor and wound up in a full-on fist fight with the guy. What's more, she won. My instructor was a mighty warrior, undefeated in a hundred battles, but even he was no match for her. Huh? But your mother is a lady of nobility. True, but she was the kind of woman to elope with the man she loved and throw it all away. Not your average duchess at all. Ooh, they eloped! I like that. It's so romantic. Imagine abandoning your family forever to be with the one you love. Not everyone can do that. It's not a question of can. It's a question of will. Even someone like you who generally despises effort would pull out all the stops for something you really care about. Isn't that right? Excuse me? I put in plenty of effort. Hey, that was a compliment. Anyhow, I look forward to the day when something inspires you to try your absolute hardest. It will be something to behold. <laughs> This me is so good! I wish I could send some home to my little sis. Raphael, what are you doing here? Oh, I was just enjoying some of this roast. Did you want a bite? No, no. I meant, what are you doing here? This isn't the dining hall. <laughs> That's funny. Of course I know this isn't the dining hall. You know that, and yet you're stuffing your face here rather than where it's appropriate. And you're not even seated. Is that the best way to eat? If you think so, let's sit down. <sighs> you're missing the point. At least use a plate. I don't have a plate with me, so there's nothing I can do about that now. But since when are you so proper, Ingrid? I'm not proper at all. You're just downright crude. Have you no respect for yourself and your journey to knighthood? Knights must work from a very young age to be upstanding in all facets. You are making a mockery of all that we stand for, you! Slow down! I can't do all this listening while I'm trying to eat. Disgusting! Now you've spilled gravy all over your shoes and your chin. You'd better wipe that up. Ooh. Now you need everything to be neat and tidy? You're really particular. This has nothing to do with me. It's what's expected of a knight. Wait. All I have to do is be neat and tidy, and I can become a knight? Forget all that studying, then. I'm just gonna work on being the neatest and tidiest one here. I... wait. Th that is not what I said. Oh, really? You're probably right. I shouldn't bother with the neat and tidy stuff. You are impossible. Tomas, no, Solon, was it not? And the Flame Emperor. It is most clear that something has transpired, and it relates to you somehow. 
Or is the fault my own? And you're just caught inside the wave? Sothis, the goddess of this world. I bear her name. Hmm, how confusing. I feel as though my head has turned to mush. this about the ball knights don't participate it's an event for students but it does pique the interest of some knights in particular <sighs> too much merriment the librarian betrayed us the death knight is back is this the time to be throwing a ball will be fine, I'm sure. You've all been to events like this before. But me? I'm noble, and I've never even been close to one of these things. Hey there. Oh, now where did that Ingrid run off to? soon and she hadn't even put on any makeup I was trying to help her out time when all the students get all lovey-dovey. You're new, but you know about the ball, yeah? I can't bear it. Young love is wasted on the young. They can't appreciate it to its fullest. Ugh. I wish I could fall in love, too.
You're up for a challenge. Sounds fun. Let me show you my cooking talent. More secret spice and hey, no peeking. This food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. This is nearly as delicious as Mother's cooking. I would happily eat this every day. This is delicious! My absolute favorite! Ah, oh, I can eat so much of this stuff. My stomach's growling just thinking about it. liking that greatly that smell mm, it's amazing my fave in fact do you like it too This dish. It was my father's favorite. This looks delicious. Let's eat.
delicious. After a scrumptious meal like that, I feel that I can really seize the day. This is my favorite. I am rather happy you went out of your way to pick it, Professor. is a rare opportunity to enjoy yourself. Please, leave everything else to us. The Meyer Village incident, the search for Tomas, we have it handled. You just focus on enjoying the ball with your students. It's for the good of everyone, don't you think? If the professors walk around in a state of distress, the students will be uneasy too. Sir, I used to think I would be comfortable with all manner of experiments, so long as they provided usable results. But when I heard of Solon's work, well, I realized I'd not considered the moral and philosophical limits of what all manner of experiments might mean. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not great with blood. Even when I'm just thinking about it, I feel a bit ill now. the ball. It reminds me of how I met my wife. I was at a village's harvest festival. There was a full moon bathing everything in its cool glow. She appeared out of nowhere, dancing gracefully in the moonlight. A lovely fairy. We soon fell in love and tied the knot. Now we have a daughter who's as bright and beautiful as a sunny morning. So, whenever I see people dancing, I think of my wife, and my heart does a little waltz. <laughs> Professor, nothing to report. Ah, other than the legend of the Goddess Tower, of course. Have you heard the students talking about it? On the last night of the Ethereal Moon, on the same night as the ball, if a man and a woman go to the Goddess Tower and make a wish, it's sure to come true. I have a wish, but I can't find anybody to make it with me. This one, yes? I th this one, yes? I thank you. This one, yes? I thank you. Return soon, please. of inviting a girl from a different house to the goddess tower on the night of the ball but here's the twist she's from a family with a much more significant and storied past than mine <sighs> i wonder if she'd ever stoop to going out with the humble son of a knight hey, hey. great work in remeyer village professor who would have ever guessed it was tomas ah but no now isn't the time to get lost in gloomy thoughts Mercedes locked me in her room for hours earlier. She was slathering pounds of makeup onto my face, saying something or other about the ball. It really wore me out. I can't 
can't believe this. It's so angry right now. First it's the Death Knight, and now Tomas, but neither of them are in custody. I can't stand the thought of such evil lurking in the world. We have to do something about this. I have to do something about this. It cannot be true that our siblings in arms could turn against us so. However, I will continue investigating members of the church. To think that even someone as senior as Tomas would fall under suspicion. I know not how far to take my search. Unlike the monks, the Knights of Seros are Lady Rhea's direct subordinates. Some are in quite unique circumstances, but I cannot think any of them would betray us. I have a request. <laughs> the ball is coming up soon. I am so excited. I can't wait to fill up on food while everyone's dancing. I even heard there'll be some prime cuts of meat. Yeah. I'm glad the Remeyer Village situation got sorted out. But it's not over yet, is it? And I can't believe old Tomas turned out to be an enemy. Who can you trust anymore? Professor? I wonder if Remire Village will ever be the same again. How do you recover from such a terrible event? So many dead. So much destroyed. I can't see how the whole village doesn't just end up abandoned. Hey. The area with the old chapel was supposed to be off limits. It was at risk of collapse, so they didn't even post guards. It's not too strange. Does that surprise you? Meh. Garrick Mock has lots of places that are blocked off for one reason or another. That's true of the underground Holy Mausoleum, as well as the Northern Woods. People call it the Sealed Forest, but as far as I can tell, it's nothing special. Just a forest. Hello there. Someone entered the old chapel. I think the townsfolk used it for feasts and such in the past. With that whole Tomas business, you can't blame the church for being on edge. Can I ask you a favor? be a ball we still have a mission it would be nice if this month passed by in peace it seems the dastards who set Ramaya village aflame have yet to be apprehended monsters trampling mercilessly over innocent lives they deserve a gruesome end the ball. It reminds me of my first such event back in the Imperial capital. It was held by my father, the Prime Minister. I really showed off my dancing skills. Everyone was quite impressed with me. Dancing a Fodlin is not the same as dancing from Bridget. The reason is, maybe that the music has many differences. In Bridget, dancing is different for each person. Our dancing has vigor and ferocity. 
There is no speech of technique for our dancing. What the? <sighs> right, hey. right. A moment. certain gentleman I'd like to invite to a rendezvous at the Goddess Tower. However, I can't imagine he'd be interested in a sheltered ingenue like myself. <sighs> it's hard to pluck up the courage when that's where my thoughts always take me. Another month full of chaos. I barely had time to catch my breath. What is the objective of Tomas and his ilk? And what makes Flame so special? Does that not bother you? Has it that long ago a female student from the academy met with a mysterious man at the goddess tower they fell in love at first sight and were bound together forever after but that's not the really interesting part the incredible part is that the man was apparently the adrestian emperor himself oh, what i wouldn't give to fall in love at first sight with a splendid and powerful gentleman I want my own fairy tale romance, and I want it now. <laughs> Everyone's in such a festive mood. <laughs> I feel a bit out of my element here. I can't help but worry something might happen while we're all distracted. After all, our enemies are always plotting. Still, this air of levity is much more agreeable than the grim atmosphere of late. Any chances to get dressy. It's all this. All right. Some scary things have been happening lately. I hope that this month of all months is peaceful. The ball is coming up and everything. Although I'm not much of a dancer, actually. The long-awaited ball. Finally an opportunity to showcase my exquisite skills on the dance floor. These skills were ingrained in me when I was a boy. My hands and feet move on pure instinct. Hmm. It's true that Tomas was employed here under the recommendation of House Ordelia. But that's all I know of the topic. I never even seen him prior to enrolling here. Even when he was supposedly in Ordelia territory, I never once saw him there. I'm still feeling bothered by all of this, but there's not much else I can say about it right now.
What happened in Ramire was indescribable. The whole village burned to the ground. So many were left without even a home to return to. Thankfully, Her Grace the Archbishop has invited those who lost everything to stay at Garrig Mach. I pray that they will be able to return to their once peaceful lives as soon as possible. Until that day, we of the Church must join together and do all that we can to help them rebuild. Pardon me. in front of people before not even once in all my life I am very much looking forward to it <laughs> need something see you again soon Last month was... well, you know even better than I do. I hope this one will be more cheerful. This ball, though, I don't know. It, it's all new to me. Hey, I've been looking for that. How'd you know? Tomas wouldn't betray the church. I don't believe it. I won't believe it. There's some people in the church who hate people like me who are from Almira, but Tomas was always real kind. But if he really was Lady Rhea's enemy, well, I'd defend her against anybody, no matter how kind they'd been in the past. Mark Monastery is said to have been completed during the ethereal moon. Why, 995 years ago, as a matter of fact. That's rather a long time ago, don't you think? Every year, a ball is held to celebrate the founding, and every 100 years, a very special celebration takes place. It's a grand festival involving all of Gerig Mark. It is thrilling to read of past festivals, and I'm rather excited to experience one for myself. Once in a lifetime, eh? The next one in five years will mark a millennium. Should be quite an event. Do you imagine you'll still be here teaching then? I can't believe I left this behind. Thank you so much for retrieving it. Hey, 
you. <laughs> Before the ball, it is customary that we host a competition of dance known as the White Heron Cup. The students are quite fond of this tradition. Each house must select a representative to compete. Their dance shall be judged by its beauty, grace, and technique. The student, who is deemed the winner, will be given the opportunity to train as a dancer, should they so please. It is a very precious thing, the gift of dance. I hope that you and your students will choose to participate. May I ask a favor of you? Yes, that is surely mine. I appreciate you bringing this to me. Oh, I adore this. Oh, I adore this. I have looked into Tomas, but I just cannot make sense of this at all. From his behavior up until now, I never would have suspected that a man like him could turn on us. I have also discovered that his appearance has changed. It is almost as if he is not even human. What in the world is going on? Yes, this is mine. Thank you for returning it. Right. Singing is so much fun. Everyone should enjoy themselves while they're doing it. I hope this song reaches the goddess's ears. as well? I see. I'll cheer for our class, of course. So, um, who will represent our house in the contest? I'm sure whoever represents our class will do a fine job. Much better than I could do. Hello, Professor. The ball will soon be upon us. I can feel my heart fluttering already. I... I have never danced in front of people before. Not even once in all my life. I am very much looking forward to it. Have you heard yet about the White Heron Cup? If you have yet to choose a representative, do you mind terribly if I volunteer? Understood. Oh well. Either way, I am still so excited about the ball. The 
coconuts. Ah, thank you for bringing me this. Life without it was difficult. Mercedes locked me in her room for hours earlier. She was slathering pounds of makeup onto my face, saying something or other about the ball. It really wore me out. Speaking of, I heard that there's going to be a dance competition. Have you sorted out who will represent our class, Professor? It's not me, is it? Please don't say it's me. <sighs> Thank goodness. I don't know the first thing about dancing. Great work in Remire Village, Professor. Who would have ever guessed it was Tomas? Ah, uh, but no. Now isn't the time to get lost in gloomy thoughts. The ball is almost here, and the White Heron Cup dance contest. So, Professor, who will be representing our class? I get it. No worries, really. I'd rather see a beautiful person dancing instead of some goof like me. students get all lovey-dovey. You're new, but you know about the ball, yeah? I can't bear it. Young love is wasted on the young. They can't appreciate it to its fullest. Ugh. I wish I could fall in love, too. Oh, speaking of the ball, Professor, have you selected your representative for the dance contest yet? If you don't, the contest will go on without your house, and that would be embarrassing. Maybe. be the same again how do you recover from such a terrible event so many dead so much destroyed i can't see how the whole village doesn't just end up abandoned i'm sorry professor i'm talking about such grim and terrible things when we could be talking about the white heron cup it's a big dance contest between the classes and i simply adore dancing i'm quite good at it since i was a diva in an opera company you know What? Why not me? <laughs> oh, whatever. So long as you remember to choose someone, hmm? Yeah. I'm glad the Remire Village situation got sorted out. But it's not over yet, is it? And I can't believe old Tomas turned out to be an enemy. Who can you trust anymore? The ball? Doesn't matter, I don't dance. I might show up for the food, though. Not that it's got anything to do with me, but have you picked someone to represent us for the White Heron Cup yet? Well, someone's bound to want to do it. I'm sure we've got a few people with the talent to win, too. coming up soon. I am so excited. I can't wait to fill up on food while everyone's dancing. I even heard there'll be some prime cuts of meat. Apparently, there's supposed to be a dance contest, too. I think it's called the White Heron Cup. 
Who's gonna represent our class? I can do it if you haven't picked someone else. Oh, really? I may not look it, but I'm actually a pretty good dancer. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh? Someone entered the old chapel. I think the townsfolk used it for feasts and such in the past. With that whole Tomas business, you can't blame the church for being on edge. Considering this recent rash of strange incidents, I wonder if having a ball is really the best idea. And then there's the white heron cup. Sheesh. What poor sap are you enlisting to represent our house, Teach? You're a smart one, Teach. I think Hilda or Lawrence would be able to win it for us, no problem. So, Tomas the Librarian was a bad guy? But he always seemed so nice. Oh, come on, Self, you're better than this. You promised you'd be on top of things this month. Oh, that! I thought I was gone for good. How did you know it was mine? Okay. Professor. Hello. What's this about? The ball? Knights don't participate. It's an event for students, but it does pique the interest of some knights in particular. Alois can't dance, but I hear he likes to watch. He volunteered to judge the White Heron Cup. Not that I care. What's this? The ball? It's Alois. He volunteered. How did you know this was mine? It's true that Tomas was employed here under the recommendation of House Ordelia. That's all I know of the topic. I'd never even seen him prior to enrolling here. Even when he was supposedly in Ordelia territory, I never once saw him there. I'm still feeling bothered by all of this. But there's not much else I can say about it right now. Right. It's the dance this month, isn't it? Can't see how anyone would be much in the mood for dancing, considering. Although I suppose the White Heron Cup does sound pretty fun. It would probably be more logical to ask someone who likes dancing in the first place, so I certainly understand. <laughs> it's almost time for the ball! Oh my, am I excited! This being a school, we don't have many chances to get dressy. Oh, but first, the White Heron Cup. Who will appear on stage, I wonder? You're choosing the representative for the dance contest, isn't that right? Choose me! I'm a pro! Oh, I was really getting excited for it. Let me know if you change your mind, huh? All right. Some scary things have been happening lately. I hope that this month, of all months, is peaceful. The ball is coming up and everything. Although I'm not much of a dancer, actually. Watching other people dance can be fun, though. I've heard people talk about the White Heron Cup. Do you know who will be representing us? I think a noble would make for a better choice. Bound to know their way around a ballroom. <laughs> ah, the long-awaited ball. Finally, an opportunity to showcase my exquisite skills on the dance floor. These skills were ingrained in me when I was a boy. My hands and feet move on pure instinct. 
From what I hear, the White Heron Cup will be held just prior to the ball. Say no more, Professor. I would consider it an honor to represent our class. You will not regret this choice. <laughs> Rehearsals will not be necessary, but if you insist, I can give you a small taste of what is to come. Well, Professor? Are these not the most exquisitely refined moves you have ever witnessed? Oh. I hear you've chosen your representative for the White Heron Cup. In that case, a word of advice. On an average year, the winning contestant has about this much charm. Charm is important, wouldn't you agree? Who wants a partner with no charm? Not me. Do your best, make sure to put in the practice, and good luck. Hey. What says the ball? It's an Apollo. He volunteers. Thank you. This one, yes? I thank you. This one, yes? I thank you. This one, yes? I thank this one, yes? I thank this one, yes? I thank you. 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 Turn soon, please. Hello there. This one, yes. I th 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 this one, yes. I thank you. Return soon, please. Hey, welcome. You have a good eye. A ple you have a good eye. A pleasure doing business with you. You have a good eye. A pleasure doing business with you. You have a good up. Uh, 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 a pleasure doing business with you. Come again. Welcome. Will this one do? Many thanks. Will this one do? Many thanks.
will this one do? Many thanks. Come back soon. is everything. It was only a trifle. That, that, <laughs> I think I get it now. You really think I'm that great? effort for once.
Professor, may I ask you something? I see. Professor. Ah, there you are. I apologize for calling you in so suddenly. Please, sit. There is a matter I would like to discuss with you. I believe I've told you this before, but it is my responsibility to aid the Archbishop in all her duties. Spiritual instruction, ceremony oversight, donation management, all of the Church's many administrative tasks. I oversee not only the priesthood, but also the Knights of Seros and the Officers Academy. The Archbishop entrusts a great deal to my discretion, and I am honored by her confidence. Even when she must make decisions herself, she often seeks my counsel in advance. And yet, your appointment to a teaching position at the Officers Academy was a complete surprise to me. Not only that, but you have also been entrusted with the Sword of the Creator. I was as surprised as anyone else to learn that. Frankly, I am just not sure how to handle you. I am the Archbishop's right hand, and yet when it comes to you, I have been told almost nothing. Not quite. I do find you to be a trustworthy individual, but my subjective opinion is not enough. I have a duty to be cautious. Should the Archbishop's trust in you prove to be misplaced, it is the faithful who will suffer most. First, I would like to know just how much you know about yourself. You are the child of Geralt Eisner, correct? That's quite a vague reply for such a basic question. 
In the future, I would advise you to answer such queries with confidence. As the former captain of the Knights of Seros, Geralt is renowned throughout Fodlan. If you really are his child, then no one would voice any complaint about you joining the Knights. How long has it been since you became a mercenary? Given your youth, that hardly seems likely. Come to think of it, I have never asked your age. Just how old are you exactly? Your face says it all. You truly don't know, do you? Just what was Gerald thinking, raising you this way? Given your responses thus far, I feel as though any further questions would just be a waste of our time. However, permit me to make one thing clear. Whatever her reasons, the Archbishop has placed great faith in you. Do not betray that trust. That is all. I'm so sorry, Professor. I somehow overslept and missed our training session. I didn't mean to cause you and the others so much trouble. Imagine if that had happened during one of our missions. It really is inexcusable. It's just, when I'm studying tactics, I lose track of time and... Oh, who am I kidding? I've always been like this. Before I came to the Officers' Academy, I was a student at the School of Sorcery in Ferdiad. Even back then, I was pulling all-nighters well before the exams. And I never even noticed I was harming myself. I'm just too focused on my goal. I know I've already told you this, but I really love to learn new things. It's a passion of sorts. I first realized I had the learning bug when I was about four or five years old. My father was so happy to see me using magic. Seeing him happy made me happy too. And that made me want to work even harder. If only things could have stayed like that. When I was about 13, my father left home. He was a devout man, so I figured he'd gone to the monastery. That's why I went to the School of Sorcery, so that I could eventually get accepted at the Officers' Academy. I studied harder than ever, and sure enough, I finally earned a referral. Unfortunately, my passion for learning became more of an obsession. I got so focused, I kind of forgot how to relax. It feels like I've been running in circles ever since. That's true. Just look at today. If my hard work stops me from working hard, what good is it? Okay, it's decided. From now on, I'll try my best not to try my best. Yay! With you on my side, I'm sure I'll succeed. From now on, if you see me going overboard, just let me know. I'm a new woman after all. <laughs> Um, what is it? Did I do something wrong? Thanks so much! Still too hot! This was great! There should be no problem. Yes, let's do our best. I thought we did a good job. I'm certain I've improved. I always was a quick study.
This looks like an ideal place to take a nap. Only one way to know for sure. Ah, and there's a nice breeze today, too. Claude? Huh? Why are you taking a sleep on the ground, Claude? Is that Petra? Where are you? Were you up in that tree the whole time? I couldn't feel your presence at all. Amazing. It is safe to take sleep in the tree's top. Why would you choose the dangerous ground instead? Your logic is sound, I'll give you that. But how is one supposed to get up there without losing the sleepies from the effort? I do not know what is meant by the sleepies, but getting in the tree's top is easy. And you will be using all of your energy, so that good sleep will find you up in the tree. I see. That makes a certain kind of sense, but it's not as relaxing as a good ground sleep. Give it some trying. And do not think with too much hardness when you return to the ground. Feel it. If you stop for thinking, your arms will get heavy. That is way more thought than I'd hoped to give this nap of mine. But I'm not one to give up before even trying. There goes nothing. I... I can do this! I have not known a noble here who can climb trees. Is this a weakness of Fodland nobles? No, not a weakness. I just... how do I... Ah! You should be quitting. It is a danger to be falling from such a height. Whew, I, uh, I think that's enough for today. This might sound like an excuse, but we don't have a lot of tall trees where I grew up. This is all new to me. You should take your sleep on the ground. I will take mine in the tree. Uh, you won that round, tree. Hey, Raphael. You heard a train? Hey, Kaspar! You work your muscles almost as much as I do. Of course. Everyone knows that if you skip a day, you lose three days of work. Ain't that the truth. Let's get to it, then. <sighs> That's probably enough for today. <sighs> you might be right. I'm exhausted. You know, I really envy you, Raphael. You're huge. I know I'm big. Everyone knows that. What are you talking about? Well, I'm not very big, but I've always wanted to be. That's why I train so much. I just don't know how to bulk up. Is that all? I know how to fix that. Really? You gotta show me. Follow me. Huh? You just led me to the dining hall. That's right. Now sit down and eat up. We're just gonna eat? Yep. Eating's the best way to get bigger. You gotta eat, and you gotta train. Do them both enough, and you're sure to grow. Well, I always thought I was a pretty big eater, but maybe I wasn't eating enough? Or not often enough? Probably both. Look at my plate compared to yours. Now this is a meal. Whoa, your plate looks like a mountain. If that's what I gotta do, then I'm gonna eat until I can't anymore. I'll eat until there's no food left. That's the spirit. Come on, let's go clear out the pantry. Let's do it. I'm gonna eat till I can't move. <laughs> Nothing here. What are you doing? Oh, Flane. I've just been researching the exploits of St. Sethleen. And why is it you're doing that precisely? Well, painting is a hobby of mine, and I thought I might like to capture her likeness. Well, how lovely. Uh, but how is researching her exploits necessary for painting? If I wanted to use a statue of St. Sethleen for my reference, it wouldn't be necessary. But that's not what I want. I wish to paint St. Sethleen herself, looking exactly as she did when she was alive. 
And if I don't know anything about who she was on the inside, the image won't be true to life. So I wanted to find some hints about who she was, and that's why I've been researching her deeds. Ah, so you were hoping to find out what type of girl she was. Girl? Interesting way of putting it, but yes, more or less. I see. <laughs> yes, yes, it is all quite clear to me now. <laughs> uh, what's happening? Okay, then. Allow me to share with you what I know of Sethleen's deeds. <clears throat> Long ago, in a world ravaged by war, Sethleen led a secluded life with her father, Kiho. One day, they met Saint Saros, who was grieved by the chaos and destruction of war. And so, the three decided to join forces. Huh? But I thought the saints gathered following a revelation from the goddess. At the Battle of Teotine, they fought against the ten elites led by Nemesis, who sought to conquer the whole world. Sethleen tended to her allies on the field of battle, until she exhausted all her strength. Then, she fell into a long slumber. But according to legend, she used her miraculous powers to heal all of the wounded. Interesting story, is it not? Have you perhaps learned something new about Sethleen? Having heard all that, I'd say she seems... incredible. Incredible? Well, I haven't heard that before. I feel certain you and I will be fast friends. Let us talk again soon. Huh. Who knew Flame was such an expert on Sethleen? Ah, oh, perfection. All oh, these tea leaves are just divine. Quite the impressive selection, if I do say so myself. Lawrence, so this is where you are. Hello, Cyril. Lured here by the exquisite aroma, were you? Uh, no. I've got a thing for you. It's a letter. All right, well, don't say I didn't deliver it. A letter for me, is it? Curious. Let's see what we have here. Alas, Professor, nothing so whimsical as that. This correspondence comes from my father. Some difficulty with Acheron, apparently. My father wishes me to return home and settle it. A young lord whose domain borders my father's. Do you know of the Great Bridge of Murden? It is an old bridge across the Aramid River, a key crossing between Alliance and Empire territory. Acheron controls the land on the northern side. Controlling such an essential location gives him quite a bit of clout, which he is ever so eager to deploy toward the purpose of stirring up trouble. This time, he is dredging up an old border dispute that was supposed to be settled some time ago. He has even begun to dispatch military force. It is best we rout his troops before they cause any damage to the surrounding villages. To my father, Acheron is insignificant in the face of far more pressing political matters. Other houses wield far greater power and influence. Goneril, Ordelia, Edmund, and of course, Regan. To make his voice heard at the round table conferences, my father must keep up relations with them. That is simply the way the Leicester Alliance works. It was, after all, founded with the goal of freedom from Fargus. We prize that independence highly, even if it occasionally hinders cooperation. There is often talk of mutual aid, but the truth is that each noble acts to maximize personal benefit. At the moment, the Regan dukedom is in no state to keep those conflicting motivations in check. So while the Alliance may appear to be at peace, the reality is that internal conflict is a routine matter. 
Of course, this leaves me precious little time to sit back and enjoy a cup of tea. Alas, I must be off. Since you're here, perhaps you would care to accompany me on this little errand? I have no fear of Acheron, but it could be valuable for you to experience these political nuances firsthand. The fate of the Alliance will someday rest upon my shoulders, so it is important to me that those I deal with understand its workings. What say you to broadening your horizons? Excellent! Let us be away at once! I shall leave the finer details of preparation in your capable hands.
far more enemies than I expected. I am glad you decided to come with us, Professor. Oh, and here I thought Count Gloucester would be too busy to send his soldiers here. Ah, well, it doesn't matter. I'll just have to deal with you little meddlers swiftly and decisively. That is Acheron. If we can deal with him, that ought to scare the rest of these rats off. We need not actually kill him. So long as we cut his escape off convincingly enough, that should suffice. Incidentally, take note of those drawbridges. They can only be operated from one of the banks. We may be able to use that to our advantage. Leave it to me. I got this. Ready any time. Ready and willing. Stay focused. Let's get to it. Who, me? I stand ready. Let us away.
I put in more work than I realized. I put in some work. Things done. My brother will be pleased. They say experience feeds growth. As expected. I just worked harder. my own strength. Making my muscles proud. My technique could use some polish.
It's not luck, it's fate. that it could get rough class. Improving. Ooh, have you found something nice? Go ahead and hand it over. Thieves, 
Do not allow them to escape. Sorry, but victory is mine. Thank you. Another one down. enemy is on the move. Do not let them through. I'll celebrate later. to me. Incoming. Is this 
Should have trained better. Things done. <laughs> Never <laughs> underestimate an outsider. Mastery at last. with me. Much Who, me? I'm really sorry. Should I have held back? That was amazing! This is what I do.
like that. Thank you. Still a long way to go. Well done. Appreciate that. Give it up, Acheron. We are in the right. If you try to remain here any longer... What, you'll kill me? A tiny kid like you kills someone like me? <laughs> oh, that's too funny. An animal like you cannot be allowed to run amok. We will settle this here and now. If you think you're up to the task, then by all means. But it's not my fault if it ends badly. We can handle that. Oh, I have an idea. 
if you could just not get in my way. I could go another few rounds. You have my thanks, Professor. Please go on ahead. I will clean up here and then report to my father. See you back at the monastery. Your assistance in this incident with Acheron has proved most essential. Consider me in your debt. Thanks to you, the Alliance was able to nip this internal conflict in the bud. He has written a pledge to my father, swearing never to cause trouble about the border again. Of course, he is hardly the type to bind himself in good faith to anything written on paper. But Acheron has many connections, both in the Alliance and in the Empire. To remove him entirely would cause more conflict, we will just have to watch him closely for now. Indeed, I do plan to eliminate him eventually, however. He is nothing but trouble. Incidentally, there was one other benefit to embarking upon this errand. Have a look at this. The Magic Staff Thursis, a relic passed down through House Gloucester for generations. It seems my father has finally recognized my ability. Apparently, he had been considering entrusting this relic to me for some time. He has had precious few opportunities to take to the field of battle personally of late. Doubtless, by giving this to me, he intends to send the message that I must work even harder. I will certainly continue to do my utmost, but I am by no means completely subservient to his will. I would not go so far as that. But my father seldom thinks beyond the immediate benefit of our house. While that is important, I prefer to consider the greater good when I make decisions. I believe that is a noble's duty. Now, for the time being, may I trust you to decide how we may best make use of Thursus? For the moment, I think you are in the best position to apply it to the betterment of all Fodlan. To be quite honest, I am not certain I feel ready to decide the fate of a relic on my own just yet. Do me this favor, Professor, and I will be grateful. Now to celebrate, allow me to treat you to tea. For the last time, Flame, the answer is no. You are departing for the Rhodos Coast, are you not? I must come. You will do no such thing. I am not going there to pay respects at the cemetery, but to do battle. With you there, I will be beside myself with worry. It will be easier for me to fight if I know you are safe. But I must. Oh, professor, you have come at just the right time. I only wish to make a small request. My dear brother is about to set forth on a most dangerous mission. Indeed. The Western Church is attempting to seize sacred ground by force. With this action, they are no longer merely believers of a different creed. They are a dangerous threat that cannot be ignored. We cannot allow the holy artifacts enshrined there to fall into their hands. 
I too wish to be of use to the church. And I do admit, I am terribly worried about my brother. No matter my protests, he will not allow me to come. Professor, this is where you can help. Will you accompany us both on this expedition? If you are there to protect me, my brother's fears will be allayed. Isn't that right, brother? I suppose your aid would indeed be useful. Yes. I knew it! Please, Professor, will you join us? Wonderful. Let us depart at once. might be interesting. Back to the drawing board. Is that the one? Thanks a bunch. Come back soon.
You heretics who defile our goddess. The sacred coast belongs to us, the Western Church. You are the heretics. Be gone from here at once. Silence, dog of the apostates. Prepare to receive our righteous blades. I will recapture the monument. Everyone else should focus on removing the surrounding enemies. Wait, brother! I shall accompany you! Let us away. Apologies. Thank you. Leave it to me. Ready any time. Stand ready. Let's get to it. Focused. Guide me well. What is that? Almost 60. 
In this situation, you were outmatched. It is our duty to worship Saint Kiho. We will not allow heretics to come near. Magnificent. Stronger.
If I made it this far. Have faith. Making Lady Rhea proud. I'll keep it up. I can really do this. Defeat me, left. Guide me well.
feel like I've grown. I feel like I get it now. Glory of progress. will be pleased. Oh, 
lose next time either. Why me? Oh, well, thanks. I am still far from my best. Well. True servants of the goddess. Behold our strategy. to be all I can. Thanks. I'm sorry. step forward.
feel my strength building. We're no match for them. Brothers, retreat. Do you dare compound your crimes further? There will be no escape for you! The goddess protects us. We will never yield to the likes of you. off. Thank you. That is the last of them. Flane, will you place some flowers at the monument? Of course, brother. That is what I came here to do. Your assistance is most appreciated. I can only hope that the Western Church will now see reason and abandon this place. But just to be safe, I have retrieved the holy artifacts. We cannot risk them falling into their hands. I will entrust them to you. I must confess, despite the situation, it was a pleasure to return here. This coast has a certain sentimental significance to my sister and me. Yes. This stone monument is not merely here to commemorate Saint Keyhole. It is also the grave of my wife. You are safe now, Mother. Finally, you may find peace. <sighs> I suppose you have earned the right to know. But this must remain between us. Flane is actually my daughter. My late wife and her mother are the same person. Mm -hmm. 
due to certain circumstances, it is more convenient for us to masquerade as siblings for the time being. There are many who would seek to harm Flame due to the unique blood she bears. Falsifying her identity is necessary to conceal her from such individuals. Mercifully, I happen to look quite young for my age. We make rather convincing siblings, do we not? Mother loved the coast so much. She and I came here together often. Fishing was her favorite pastime. I used to sit and watch while she cast her line. I remember it fondly. You did so love to eat the fish she caught as well. Fish is my favorite food, it is true. Doing no small part to Mother. I still come here to fish from time to time, using the skills my wife taught me. It reminds me how deeply I appreciate those years, and how I wish I could return to them. We cannot turn back the clock, Father. We must live our lives fully, in the present moment. <sighs> You're right. That is what she always said, isn't it? Dwell too much on the past, and you may be unable to move forward. Come then. Let us return home. Goodbye, Mother. I love you. I shall bring flowers again for you next time. excited about. I have done it! No need to discontinue with the praises. Enough praise. What? Got it. Good to go. Just as I always expected. No matter how old one gets, it's always nice to hear job well done. I still have much to learn. Jump. Gentlemen, my sincerest apologies for the wait. 
thank you for gathering here on the eve of the highly anticipated ball to bear witness to the Academy-wide dance competition. Welcome to the White Heron Cup. The competition will be judged by me, your humble servant, Alois Rangel, and also the acclaimed former songstress of the Mittelfrank Opera Company, Manuela Casagranda. Yes, yes, thank you. Oh, and it should go without saying, but I swear to show no bias to my own house. Got it? Good. Last but not least, the glamorous assassin who does all of her dancing in the dead of night, Shamir Navran! Hmm. The three of us swear on our honor to judge the following proceedings with utmost impartiality and fairness. And with that, will the representatives of each house please make their way to the stage? Contestants, are you ready to dance? And is the band prepared to play? Very well. Begin! Time! That's all, folks! Splendid! All three of you were fantastic! <laughs> now, let's hear what the judges have to say. Oh my, let's see. I suppose I have no choice but to vote for... The Golden Deer House. Your performance was exhilarating. My heart is still beating a mile a minute. I vote for... The Black Eagle House. Decisive movements. Nothing wasted. Great feedback, both of you. Well then, let's see. Factoring in my own humble opinion... Yes, we have a winner! And I will announce who it is right now! Without any delay, the winner of this year's White Heron Cup is... The Golden Deer House! <laughs> As expected. Once more, please give a big round of applause for our talented participants. for the wait. Mmm, this smells good. I wonder how it tastes. Thank you. It smells delightful. Hmm? No. So it is. Ah. Please, join me for training when you have the time. There is much I could learn from you. <laughs> is that right? I see. Professor. Is something the matter? Hmm. Professor. That's... Hmm? I am not good with facial expressions. Is my smile passable at present? 
thank you for the treat. I had a wonderful time. I would love to do this again, if that is acceptable to you. Let's do this right. Yes, I can help. I'm excited. Well, we did it. Now I see the heart of it. Better than before. I think I get it. I'm a quick study. I appreciate your effort. Was there any doubt? I actually passed? All that hard work's paid off. Ignatz, hello. What are you up to? Ah, you frightened me. Oh, calm yourself. What is it that you're drawing? 
I thought I'd jot down some sketches of everyone while they're training. And then later on, I'll try to practice on my own. Mm. But I can't really concentrate on sketching if someone's watching me. Just sketches, hmm? Even so, they're lovely. There's such life in them. It's as if they're moving on the page before my very eyes. Y you really think so? You know, I always hoped to be an artist. With skills like that, I'm quite certain you could easily make a living of it. And your demeanor is different when you draw. Bolder somehow. Ah, yes, there's an idea. Perhaps in the future you will join my retinue as my personal painter. Wait, have we not discussed this arrangement already? I had decided to take you into my service as a knight, had I not? Becoming a knight was my father's idea. Being an artist is out of the question, I'm afraid. So you've said. Well then, I suppose you shall simply have to become a knight who also paints. A knight who also paints? I have seen your talent and can attest to it. Your gifts are too great to wither away in obscurity. A knight with the rare gift of artistic talent would be most welcome in my employ. <laughs> I had never thought of that. Still, I don't understand why you'd want me as one of your knights. As a fighter, I'm unremarkable. There is more to knighthood than combat. Courtly manners, a dignified bearing, and an aesthetic sensibility are also essential. A knight with an eye for art and the talent to create it is sure to improve the image of the nobility. <laughs> Lawrence, I'd never have guessed you were prone to such eccentric ideas. Thank you. I'm feeling a little more confident after hearing your kind words. Oh, no cause for thanks. It is a noble's duty to provide guidance to those in need. Is that... Raphael? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. But you can't be so picky. You need some meat in your diet. I don't know if you can eat human food, but bug meat might be good for you. That's right. You need to eat plenty of bug meat if you want to get big and strong like me. No more sweets for you. What? He's talking to a bird? Huh? Is someone there? Um... Oh, Marianne! You're right on time. This little birdie was telling me that he misses you. And, uh, oh, oh! Oh, it flew off. It appears so. Why do you think birds fly away when there's more than one person around? Birds never seem to stay put, unless I'm alone. Birds are very cautious creatures. They tend to fly away when they're startled. You mean they're afraid of loud noises? Oops, <laughs> that was probably too loud for the birds. Come on, Raphael, keep it down. How's this? Do you think we'd be able to talk to birds together like this? I still haven't met a bird that can speak human. I was hoping you could introduce me. Huh? I thought you were just talking to one. I was mostly talking at him, not to him. He just said chirp chirp and stuff like that. Uh, I had no idea what he was talking about. I don't think he understood me either. <sighs> Marianne. You always know which birds understand what you're saying, right? Next time you find a bird who understands you, I hope you let me know so I can join the conversation. Now what am I supposed to do? Oh, it's Raphael. What's he doing at that desk? Are you studying? I thought you'd given up on it. Nice to see her. <laughs> what the? Oh, Leone! <laughs> What's wrong? Why are you crying? I... I just got a thank you letter from my little sister. Okay, maybe start from the beginning. My little sister lives with my grandpa now. She's had to deal with so much since I decided not to take over the family business. You might have to back up a bit more before this starts to make sense to me. Our parents were merchants, but they died in an accident. We had some money saved at first, but... 
but Grandpa isn't healthy enough to work, and I'm not smart enough to work a job that requires much thinking. That's really tough. Hard to make a fortune with just your strength, I'm sure. I had to sell all our valuables just to pay my way here so I could become a knight. Wow, that's a lot of pressure. My sister wants the best for me, but... She's the smart one in the family. She's the one that should be here. When I ask if she needs anything, she always says she's fine. She doesn't want to ask me for anything, because she knows I'm having such a hard time here. She sounds like a great kid. So, what did the letter say? It says she's happy and thankful for all the study materials I sent her. That's good, right? Wait, where did you find extras? I couldn't find any, so I just sent her mine. It's like you said, right? It's better to give them to someone who will use them instead of letting them go to waste. Um, don't take this the wrong way, but don't you still kind of need those? Well, I guess if it makes her happy, it's worth it. Maybe I can scrounge something up for her too. Huh? Is that Ingrid? I'd better get out of here before she scolds me again. Actually, she looks kind of sad. Maybe I shouldn't run away. Hey! Ingrid! Why do you look so sad? Are you hungry or something? Oh, it's you. No, I'm not hungry. You're not hungry? But you're sad anyway? I don't get it. Are you sick? No. Then are you sure you're not hungry? I just told you that wasn't it. It's nothing you can help with anyway. Well, sometimes you gotta talk it out. That's what my grandpa says. Yeah, I guess that's helpful sometimes. Are you willing to listen then? Of course! Uh, please, go ahead. I've just received yet another letter from my father regarding a marriage arrangement with a noble family. I see, I see. I am the only person in House Galatea capable of carrying on our family line, of passing on a crest. Ah, I see. I see. I've long understood that it would be expected of me to marry, of course. Hmm, I see. I see. Raphael, are you even listening? I'm right there with you, but... Did you hear that ominous sound? Was that... Thunder? Sorry. All that listening made me hungry. After hearing you out, I think you're probably just hungry too. And your troubles are sure to go away after a good meal. I really am not hungry. But I can't say no to good food. Alright, let's just eat then. I can tell you about my struggles some other time, maybe. <laughs> It's you. Going for a walk again today? No, I'm on cooking duty today, and I have to head into town for some groceries. All on your own? Hmm, I'd better go with you. I'd be worried if you went by yourself. No, please. I can manage on my own. But won't you have a hard time carrying everything back? Not at all. I'll be fine. I'm just replacing a few ingredients. Also, I may not look it, but I'm actually quite strong. I've been exercising every day. You're right. You don't look it. Your biceps are a fraction of the size of Raphael's. If you start fumbling around under the weight of all the groceries, and then you trip and spill everything everywhere... Look, I'm just saying that could be your future. It could happen. It doesn't look pretty. That's what you think of me, huh? Yep. You're honestly a bit of a mess. I see. If that's how you feel. Knock it off with the wounded puppy dog eyes. As though I'm some sort of villain in your story. I'm sorry. That wasn't my intention. I'm just a bit sensitive, that's all. You're talking like you don't respect me. I see. So now it's my fault? No matter how grown you seem to think you are, there's so much you're incapable of. You can play at being a mature adult, but it only ever complicates things, and that's exactly what makes you look like a child. Uh, oh, enough already! Would you just leave me alone? 
Maybe I went a bit far that time. But he's so stubborn despite his ineptitude. I can't just leave it be. He's so foolish, constantly making a mess of things. Wait, but then... No matter how much we stretch, some things are always beyond us. I think it's fine to be vulnerable and ask for help sometimes. What he said to me before... To everyone else, do I seem just like Ignatz? Phew, that about wraps it up for today's training. No thanks to a certain distraction. Professor Hanneman, I know you're there. It's extremely unsettling the way you're always staring like that. Oh, my apologies, child. I was trying to remain inconspicuous, not wanting to interrupt. Your half-hearted attempt to hide your weird staring only makes it weirder. Well, I must apologize. In the future, I shall do my staring out in the open. That might ease the weirdness, but it will continue to be extremely unsettling. I have no desire to disturb nor to disquiet you. But you are a most exquisite subject for my crest research. And you understand that the foundation of all research is observation. I understand well enough, and I'll do my best to ignore it, but in return... In return, I will keep your secret. I have not spoken a word of your twin crests, not even to the church. If they knew I was withholding such valuable information, I might be branded a traitor. But such matters are trivial compared to the future of Crestology. Shh! Don't talk so loudly about it out here in the open! Pardon my excitement. I simply cannot let the opportunity to study such a miraculous subject go to waste. These awful crests may seem miraculous to you, but for me, they fall under the category of curse. I hope one day you will share more about your tragic origins whenever you have the time to recount it. Your tale may contain valuable information. You are utterly lacking in empathy, you know that? Even if you spent your entire life observing me, you'd never understand my feelings and all I've been through. Now, if you'll excuse me. Ah, I fear I may have made a misstep. I have no desire to trouble her, yet my research... Finished with your training, Miss Marianne? Oh, but Professor Hanneman, yes, I've just finished training for the day. You have merely completed the exercises assigned to you, yes? Nothing more? Or am I wrong? Yes. I'm sorry. I should have done more. No, no, please. You've done as you were asked. Quite solid work, child. I simply wish to ask a question. You possess a crest, do you not? I... <sighs> when you entered the officer's academy, your father submitted a request to the monastery, as well as a significant donation. Your father asked that your crest not be confirmed under any circumstances. At first, I thought he did not want the world to know that his daughter bore no crest. In your father's position as a newly minted noble, it would be most advantageous for his daughter to possess a crest, you see. However, I am now certain I was wrong. I believe you do, in fact, possess a crest of some sort. How did you find out? I have been called the Father of Crestology, which is a bit of an ostentatious title, I admit. However, a brief period of observation allows me to hazard a usually accurate guess as to whether a body houses a crest or not. With the knowledge of your father's actions and my own observations, I come to you with a warning. As a crest bearer, you are guaranteed to have certain talents. It is prudent to study your crest diligently 
to ensure your safe mastery of these talents, whatever they may prove to be. No, no. I have no talents. Oh, yes. You do. No matter how hard you may try to hide it, my sight is keener than that. And what I see, others will eventually notice as well. Those who hold power must wield it in the service of their fellow man, Miss Marianne. I believe that is true, whether you are peasant or noble. And doubly true, I would say, for those with crests. Or do you think I'm wrong? I... Uh... On principle alone, it is a waste to allow a rare talent to remain dormant. I would like very much to advise you to aid your understanding of your crest. Will you accept my offer? N no, I refuse. That is regrettable. A veritable tragedy, Miss Mary. was a foregone conclusion. Am I or am I not Lawrence Hellman Gloucester? Thank you. I am here for the invitation. A fresh and fruity aroma. Ah, oh, yes, this is my kind of tea. Thank you. Settles nicely on the palate. Oh? You think so? Oh? Splendid! Oh? Indeed! Even a noble needs a break now and then. One cannot be at one's best all the time. Oh, wonderful. Next time, I will provide the tea. Farewell. other types of food. Hmm, I see. Cooking is much more exciting than studying or training. Yeah, you just get it, Professor. This is my favorite. I appreciate any good meal, but nothing beats enjoying my favorite food.
This is nearly as delicious as Mother's cooking. I would happily eat this every day. This is delicious! My absolute favorite! smell mm, it's amazing my fave in fact do you like it too hmm. I like seeing a table full of my favorite dishes Eating delicious food really takes my worries away. This is my favorite. I am rather happy you went out of your way to pick it, Professor. That looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. Eating food always fires me up. Hoorah! Let's go fight somebody! Can't compete with me. You can't compete with me. Okay. Yeah. Uh. 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 
Magnificent. Trivial victory. Learning these things gives me great difficult... uh... difficulty. There's someone who's slightly off. Oh well, that adds some color, I suppose. Need something? This one? You're all set. See you again soon. <laughs> I have been told that your house won the White Heron Cup. This can only be a result of the students' talent and effort. Not to mention your steadfast instruction. I appreciate this. Oh, I adore this. Oh, I adore this. I appreciate this. Oh, I adore this. Hello, Professor. It is so nice to see you here. It brings me great joy to know that you wish to visit with me again. I have this odd feeling that recently you've been trying to avoid me. Yes, I thought as much. In any case, I am delighted by this opportunity to speak with you again. <laughs> My, how laughable I must seem. I imagine you must be dumbstruck by how unbecoming my behavior is for the Archbishop of all of Fodlan. Oh. 
Oh, please do not waste your apologies on me. I am perhaps oversensitive, but thank you all the same. You are very kind. In any case, how are you feeling? Have you experienced anything strange since you began wielding the Sword of the Creator? Oh, there are just so many legends about that blade. I was worried that carrying it may result in some strange side effect. Has there really been nothing odd? A tightness in your chest? Strange dreams? Anything of the sort? So you saw a young girl, and she appeared to you like a phantom? I'm afraid I can't explain such an occurrence, but... It may very well have something to do with that relic of yours. Please know that you are welcome to come to me about anything. I am here for you, always. By the way, when I see you at work giving such splendid guidance to all of your students, I want you to know that it brings me great joy, as though I myself am receiving the benefit of your kindness. <laughs> It's just, I was wondering why it seems as if no one values their own lives. Why do we fight until we die? Why do we kill without hesitation? I hate it. I don't like taking lives, or even the sight of blood. In the last battle, some of the soldiers under my command died for foolish reasons. Those soldiers could have pulled back. Instead, they kept fighting and were overrun. Am I supposed to be satisfied with the victory alone, even at the cost of such life? Exactly. I don't see the point. Honor? That's a foolish reason to give your life. Glory? Even worse. Just the thought frightens me. I'm not suited for battle, Professor. I'm happy you feel that way, but it seems like so much in our world is decided by who wins or loses a fight. Very little is accomplished via diplomacy or even simple decency. Professor, you take the time to lead me and teach me like this every day. Could the reason be that you don't want me to die on the battlefield? That's a bold statement, Professor. But for whatever reason, I want to believe you. You really are a strange person, you know? Professor, I wish to ask something of you. I... I don't want to kill. I don't want blood on my hands. I just want to lie on my back and soak up the sun filtering down through the trees. And I want you to help me make that a reality. The time has come for the annual ball, but first, an eve of merriment. Okay, I'll admit it, the Officer's Academy isn't as uptight as I thought. Ooh, I adore such things! Dancing is the only thing I'm really good at anyway. There's a feast tomorrow, isn't there? Isn't there? Oh, I can't wait a moment longer. Dancing? Singing? I'm not good at either of those things. So? Dancing is fun! Oh, and remember that you can't dance with the same partner multiple times. It's tradition! 
That means you have to dance with all of the gentlemen in all of the houses, swapping dance partners as you please. <laughs> How scandalous! I, for one, plan to simply behold the pure essence of dance. I'll, um, watch from a distance. You can't just watch, Marianne. If a boy asks you to dance, you simply must accept. It's only polite. You can ask anyone to dance? God, whatever should I do? <laughs> oh, lucky you, Ignatz. Tomorrow, if only for a day, you may live out your dearest dreams of an exalted existence. As for me, I am surely to be overwhelmed with the propositions of desperate ladies. I will doubtless have little time for partners of my own choosing. Which one of you is dreaming now, Lawrence? Everyone, listen up. To no one's surprise, I have a brilliant idea. Teach, you'll want in on this too. This may sound impetuous, perhaps irresponsible, almost certainly impossible. But we're going to do it anyway. In exactly five years' time, let's promise to meet again right here at the monastery. A reunion? There's usually food at reunions. Count me in, Claude. Five years from now, will be the monastery's Millennium Festival, celebrating 1,000 years since the founding of Garrig Mach. I hear the Millennium Festival will be the largest celebration in the monastery's history. Oh, I get it. It'll be easier for us to all get back here with the Millennium Festival as an excuse. How true. As the new leader of the Alliance, I will certainly have occasion to attend and pay my respects to Lady Rhea. That almost certainly will not transpire. And you teach? I guess it's hard to imagine that you'll still be teaching here five years from now. But I'm sure no matter where you end up, you'll come running at the chance to see your adorable little golden deer again, right? <clears throat> that was your cue to promise everyone you'll return. Go on, set a good example, Teach. If you promise, everyone else will too. <laughs> I'm already excited. After five years, we'll all be whoever we're going to become. Oh, please, Professor, invite Captain Gerald too. I want to show him how well his apprentice turns out. It's settled then. What do you say, Claude? Is it official? The promise is sealed. That means we're all obligated to keep it. Five years from today, all of us will meet again at the monastery. Don't forget it, Teach. You and I will meet here again. Running away? I understand. You hardly had the time to breathe in there. It must be hard to be the favorite teacher at the ball. <laughs> poor, poor professor.
So you do think you're the favorite? <laughs> I might have known. But where is there to run? This place is filled with joyful students looking for a dance. Ah, I see. The Goddess Tower waits for you. Professor? Don't toy with me like that, Professor. I know it's you. I figured you might be lost or something, so I followed you inside. Everyone seems to be looking for you. You're surprisingly popular. Despite your confidence, I'm still surprised by your popularity with the ladies. It isn't like you're very sociable, after all. Not to be rude, mind you. Uh, I wouldn't know, to be honest. I have no interest in such things. The Academy is for honing one's skills. Not for frivolous romances, despite what the other students may think. I overheard them gossiping about a place where a man and a woman can make a vow, and it is certain it will come to pass. Seems to be some folk tale they enjoy. I wonder where this place is. Oh, of course. I recall now. It's... Wait. That's... That's here, isn't it? Uh, just to be clear, this is pure coincidence. I didn't follow you for... For that. But we are here alone. So people may wonder what our aim is. Let's get out of here before someone sees us and gets the wrong idea. Are you saying you don't mind if someone sees us and thinks... Oh. I suppose you believe there's no danger of that since it's just me. You're treating me like a child, aren't you? Well, I don't mind either then. Obviously, there's nothing going on here. If you are going to stick around until we collect dust, then so will I! Actually, I'm going to go now. Don't you stay too long either. You'll catch your death of cold out here. It seems that everyone is having a delightful time. Will you not dance some more? How dull of you. Had I a body of my own? Oh, I would sing and dance until I fell upon the ground. But you... <laughs> do as you will. Ah, oh, you're not the only one who feels that way. Look over there. bored beyond compare. Will you not follow her? Oh, come on, hurry up. I know that you are curious to see what she is up to. I hear someone singing from over there.
That song... I feel that I have heard it in the past. Actually, it is not that I have heard it. I... Did I once sing that song to someone? No. There's more. I wrote this song. Oh, but how could that be so? If that were true, then how could she be singing it? Unless... No, no. I am suddenly so exhausted. As are you, no doubt. Quickly then, to bed with you. It has been a while since we last spoke, Professor. Spare me a moment again, will you not? You recall how you helped me and allowed me to join your class, yes? I have learned a great many things since then. Indeed, I have truly grown so much. This personal growth is due in large part to you. And I wish to express my gratitude, sincerely. Excuse me? Are you implying that I am still naive? I will have you know that I have made many friends and am constantly learning new things. Why, when I go to the market, alone, I even haggle. You must be familiar with the delicate art of haggling, in which one negotiates a lower asking price for an item. That is the type of knowledge common only to those as mature as myself. Who? Me? Um, have you not asked this once before? It is a bit rude to ask repeatedly, you know. Is that so? Well, it seems we have something in common, since I do not know your age, I... Come now, there is nothing to be gained from focusing so heavily on age. Touching on a previous discussion, I think I have learned more about you. I mentioned how you possess an air of mystery. I compared you to any old sea, but I have come to realize you are more like a particular sea, one I have seen before. When I was quite small, my mother would take me out to play in the sea. She was an excellent fisher, my mother. I grew to love fish deeply because of her. Well, you see, fish are... Oh, er, wait. I was talking about the sea, was I not? Anyhow, I sense that, like the sea, your depths are seemingly impenetrable. Yet, despite your unknowable depths, there is something familiar about you. It's as if we have met somewhere long, long ago. No, I do not think so. It is all quite strange, really. I wonder if we might be distant relatives. <laughs> No, that cannot be it either. After all, if we were related, that would mean... Hmm. Though considering all that Rhea has done, it is not entirely outside the realm of possibility. Hmm? Oh, apologies. Just muttering to myself. It is nothing. Mutterings aside, I mean to say that you do not feel like a stranger to me. For whatever reason, I feel deeply connected to you. And for this, I am glad.
I'm a failure. Yet another lovely day. On such a fine day as this, it would certainly be nice to go for a stroll with someone. I wonder if anyone is around. Oh my, such awful noises. Who, or rather, what is making those sounds? Huh? Oh, hello, Flame! Jeez, I feel a bit better now. Oh, you scared me. You nearly knocked me over with that scream. Well, you startled me, appearing out of nowhere and making such sounds. What is it you are doing here anyway? I'm just out here using logs to train. Wow, are you really capable of lifting something so massive, Raphael? Of course. Wanna see? <laughs> See? Told you I could do it. That was magnificent! Do you suppose I could give it a try as well? Hmm. It might be a bit too much for your tiny arms. Tiny or no, I want to be stronger. Do you have any tips for someone both willing and eager to grow? It's probably best to start by practicing your battle cry. If you let out a good shout, you'll feel even more powerful. Ah, you are a font of knowledge. Can you apply your wisdom and show me by example? No problem. Just follow my lead. How did I fare? Do I look stronger now? Um... <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's working! I knew this would help! <sighs> That's enough. You're done for today. <sighs> right. Thanks. Are you feeling pain anywhere, Leone? No. Sorry, I'm all right. Why are you apologizing? Because I can't hold my own against you. And on top of that, you have to worry about hurting me. I feel like I've let you down. Do you know what I meant when I said, you're done for today? Probably that I was about to keel over? No. It wasn't about your physical strength. I could tell that you didn't have the will to keep fighting. I've got plenty of will. No matter what I do, I can't win. Isn't that what you were thinking? If you think you can't win, you won't. <sighs> Perhaps you already knew that. Good point. But never assume that you'll win. That is, don't underestimate your foe. At all times, you have to keep a clear head to make split-second decisions. In battle, mistakes are deadly. But I don't have a crest or a relic. How could I ever hope to beat you? If you put it like that, I'll fight barehanded, and I won't use my crest. Think you can win? Do your worst. Oh dear, I might have overdone it there. But I believe in her. I would be doing her a disservice if I pulled any punches. It's Leone, after all. She'll be back on her feet and charging at me before I know it. Captain?
Captain? Captain, where are you? Hey, Professor, have you seen your old man? Too bad. I guess it will have to be you, then. I'm back. Sorry for the delay. My last mission took longer than expected. Captain, thank goodness you're here. There are reports of demonic beasts near the chapel. Nonsense. I haven't heard anything about the monastery's walls being breached. That's why I'm heading there now, to see what's really going on. You'll join as well, won't you? Of course. We're both sworn to protect this place. It's odd. Just before they appeared, someone saw a number of students heading toward the chapel. They were apparently acting strange, as though they weren't in their right minds. Shortly after, demonic beasts started to appear, one after another. Hmm. The students. There's no way those demonic beasts got in from the outside. But none of that matters right now. We need to act. Go summon your students. Damn it. I wanted to talk to you about something important, but there's no time. Oh, there's never any damn time. But this is much more urgent, so it can hold for now. I'll meet you there.
I am a sight to behold. Oh, this is exciting. Life is comprised of new challenges. Thanks a bunch! Is that the one? Thanks a bunch! Is that the one? Thanks a bunch! Another chance to improve.
Was that the one? Thanks a bunch. Come back soon. Are demonic beasts here they're emerging from the chapel i'll head that way the rest of you protect the students who weren't able to get away help me these beasts they're uh, somebody help me you stupid beasts don't you dare come over here let's get to it ready and willing Appreciated. Much needed. Stand ready. Who, me? to me stay focused
beast. There's a stone or something on its forehead. students how can this be thank you but my friends who couldn't get away are they okay You had it in you.
sorry, the victory is mine. You really think you can keep going? Don't push yourself too hard. Thinking about what happened at Ramayer Village, it's clear you've gotten the hang of being a leader. Maybe you should have taken command of me too. <laughs> Thank you. Not good. It was amazing. I was so scared. I'll find a way to repay you. I promise.
Much needed. That helps. Me too. Hey, I got an idea. I got this. Making my muscles proud. Stay focused. I stand ready. Ready anytime. Thank you. Leave it to me. Ready when you are. Thank you. I like how this feels. I'm pretty much perfect. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. Got to try. Our power is yours. Is this okay? Let's get to it. I'm in debt. Yeah, I won! Sorry. That was a close one. You saved me! Thank you! <sighs> there isn't a trace of evidence to be found in the chapel. This must have something to do with Remire. Perhaps... Wait! Huh? Another student? Run along now. Thanks for all your help, sir. 
<laughs> You're just a pathetic old man. How dare you get in the way of my brilliant plan, you dog. Run along now. Thanks for all your help, sir. <laughs> huh? What are you doing here? You must survive. Merely because there is still a role that I require you to fulfill. <laughs> First time I saw you cry, your tears would be for me. It's sad, and yet I'm happy for it. Thank you, kid. So this is where your father lived. Hmm? Are you still crying? If turning back the hands of time was not enough to save his life, you must accept what came to pass was fate. Agreed. We cannot let the wicked ones run free. Your father said to look for something here. He must have been referring to whatever is behind that bookcase there. Your father's diary? Huh. His handwriting is prettier than his face would suggest. Well, well. These entries here are from before your birth. He seems to have been writing this for quite some time. That part there. Horsebow Moon, year 1159. Day 20 of the Horsebow Moon. All is cloudy. I can't believe she's dead. Lady Rhea said she died during childbirth. But is that the truth? And still, the child she traded her life for doesn't make a sound. Didn't even cry at birth. Day 25 of the Horsebow Moon. It's raining. The baby doesn't laugh or cry. Not ever. Lady Rhea says not to worry about a baby that doesn't cry. It isn't natural. I had a doctor examine the child in secret. He said the pulse is normal, but there's no heartbeat. No heartbeat. Day 2 of the Wyvern Moon. Sunny. I feel I must take the child and leave. But the church is always watching us. I don't know what Lady Rhea has planned. I used to think the world of Lady Rhea. Now I'm terrified of her. Day 8 of the Wyvern Moon. More rain. I used the fire that broke out last night to fake the child's death. Lady Rhea is in a state over the news, but I can't change what I've done. I've got to take the child and leave. Well now, that baby must be you. That means... <clears throat> Someone is approaching us. Ah, here you are. To think that Captain... That 
Geralt would meet his end like that. I hope you know that you were the most important thing in the world to him. He wasn't the most emotional guy. I'm sure expressing his affection wouldn't have come naturally to him. After what's happened, it's up to me now. I, Alois, swear to protect you in the captain's stead. <sighs> Sorry. This isn't the time for my blathering. Lady Rhea is looking for you. I came to tell you that. I'll take my leave now. This book is filled with secrets yet unknown. We must return another time to read the rest. Oh, but I have at least figured one thing out. I know now why our fates are intertwined. Professor, I have been waiting for you. I am filled with grief at the loss of our most celebrated knight. Gerald was an ally of many years, and also a dear friend. He fell in love with one of the nuns here at Garrigmark. Their love produced a child whom she died giving birth to. It was her decision. She weighed her own life against that of her child's and, in the end, implored me to save the child. Your father never truly accepted that decision. He took the child, took you, and disappeared without warning. Your mother, she was my... I'm sorry for the interruption, Lady Rhea. There's something you must hear immediately. A report from the knights patrolling the area. Very well. Professor, you are dismissed for the day. Please rest and focus only on mending your heart. Understood? <laughs>